Hello friends and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to the Larkin Building by Frank Lloyd Wright, built in 1906 in Buffalo, New York. Built to serve as the administrative headquarters for the Larkin Company's burgeoning mail order business, the building was necessarily sited amidst the tangle of railroad lines. To protect its workers from the smoke-laden environment, Wright's six-story building turned inward with a Roman-style atrium and surrounding inward-facing balconies, creating a light and airy interior. In his autobiography, Wright would later describe the Larkin building as a genuine expression of power directly applied to purpose. In the same sense that the ocean liner, the airplane, and the car is so. Though the Larkin Building is now celebrated for its avant-garde vision, Wright's defiant departure from the popular Beaux-Arts style made it appear a monster of awkwardness to many of his contemporaries, such as the hard-hitting architectural record critic Russell Sturgis. Despite being demolished in 1950, the Larkin Building remains a modern icon of 20th century architecture. The building was constructed of dark red brick utilizing pink tinted mortar. Six stories high, the main building was attached to an annex of approximately three stories. The entire roof was paved with brick and served as a recreation area for the building's employees, their families, and guests. The entrances of the building were flanked by two waterfall-like fountains. Above the fountains were bar reliefs by Richard W. Bach, who also designed the globes on the tops of the central exterior piers of the building. These globes were removed in 1941 due to structural problems associated with their weight, and where they are now, if indeed they still exist, is not known. A masterpiece by a very young Frank Lloyd Wright, so revolutionary that the critics needed some time to understand the impact implied by his proposal. Today, the Larkin Administration Building rightly occupies a place of honor in the history of modern architecture for its technical, aesthetic, and social advances. While some of its ideas seem strange today, such as the organ in the middle of the atrium and the desks with built-in chairs, others have become part of the architectural landscape that surrounds us in the workplace, such as the glass doors, the open-plan workspaces, and the closed, climate-controlled environment. At the heart of its cream brick interior, a 76-foot-tall skylit courtyard ringed with inscriptions extolling the virtues of labor provided an almost ecclesiastical light from above. The interior consisted of a five-story central court or nave surrounded by balconies. The upper level contained a kitchen, bakery, dining rooms, classrooms, a branch of the Buffalo Public Library, restrooms, a roof garden, and a conservatory. The interior walls of the building were made of semi-vitreous, hard, cream-colored brick. Natural and artificial light was provided by Wright-designed hermetically sealed double-paned windows, as well as Wright-designed electrical fixtures that enabled the employees to work in comfort at their right designed metal office furniture while breathing air from a right designed air conditioning system. Wright's use of magnesite in the building's interior is interesting since magnesite is mainly used to line the inside of steel making furnaces. It is also mixed with cement to make a compound used in flooring. In the Larkin building Wright used magnesite that was mined in Greece and shipped to Buffalo. Magnesite was used in the construction of stairs, doors, window sills, coping, capitals, partitions, desktops, and plumbing slabs. It was reported that the floors of the Larkin building were marble. In reality, the floors consisted of a base of concrete cushioned with a mixture of wood fiber and magnesite, then covered with sheets of magnesite. The 76-foot-tall, 23-meter-high light court was located in the center of the building, which provided natural sunlight to all of the floors. Between its support piers ran 14 sets of three inspiration words each, 
such as generosity, altruism, sacrifice, integrity, loyalty, fidelity, imagination, judgment, initiative, intelligence, enthusiasm, control, and cooperation, economy, and industry. Architectural historian Vincent Scully Jr. wrote of the structure, vertical brick piers and wall planes made possible the splendid integration of space, structure, and massing which Wright achieved in the Larkin Company office building at Buffalo. In space, the building was conceived of as facing inward with a glass-roofed central hall rising the entire height and with horizontal office floors woven around it. The pattern of piers and walls which makes these spaces is clearly unified in both plan and section. The vertical piers rise uninterruptedly inside and the horizontal planes of the office floors are kept back from their edges so that they seem once more to be woven through them. At the same time, the stiff verticals of the interior of the Larkin building continue to recall the challenge of the exterior so that the occupant could not feel himself to be simply inside a shell. The sequence was an emotional one and a progress, challenge, bafflement, compression, search, and finally surprise, release, transformation, and recall. It was almost a Baroque progression, but its methods were stiffer and harder, befitting the industrial program which they praised.